to another episode of Yeah, No, I Know. But before we get started, a little disclaimer. Nothing in this podcast is being claimed as fact. Most everything discussed here are our own individual, personal opinions, beliefs, and experiences. We encourage you to always do your own research and form your own opinions. Nothing one person says on this podcast goes for everyone here. Each individual speaking is speaking only for themselves and no one else on the podcast. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Hey guys, today's episode is going to be at the salon because we like to make the most of our time. <laughs> so I'm about to uh, get my extensions get pulled out. In. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're about to do that. We're going to pull out these extensions right now and then start the podcast episodes with my hair out. So you'll think it's Gollum, but it's really me in a second. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Also the sound might be a little annoying today, but if you're watching on YouTube, which you are, if you're seeing this snippet, then you're watching and hopefully the sound won't be as annoying, but we'll try our best. <laughs> Mom, what the hell? <sighs> Hi. Hi. Oh, dude, is that funny? Well, now you're happy. Oh my gosh. We that should film me. You're so cute. You're so cute. Hey guys, welcome back to Yeah, No, I Know, another episode. <laughs> um, today, Jenna, what are we going to be talking about? Pregnancy, delivery, labor, doulas, midwives. Um, and all that good stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, just an FYI, we are on Spotify and Apple podcast. And if you're listening on one of those others, we're on YouTube. If you prefer the visual, this, what you're seeing right now. And we're in a hair salon. We're actually in Jenna's hair salon and I'm getting my hair done today. Cause as you can tell by my roots, it has been quite a while. So it might be a little noisy in that respect. And then, um, do you guys notice anything different about Brooklyn? As I'm sitting here drinking a mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> There's no baby. Little Jensen's down here. No baby. He's down here. He's, yeah, he's down here. Should I grab him? Yeah. You guys want to see him? He's My so cute freaking man. cute. Brooklyn lo looks freaking amazing. Like, right after yeah. she had him, we're like, excuse me, where is everything? <laughs> Super it's like annoying. gone. Sorry. Yeah, I hope I'm not lucky. Yeah. It's, I think the benefit of working out, like, your whole pregnancy, I think it just helps so much. And yeah. um, I think I'm like... Last time I checked was like six to ten pounds, something like that, like over what I was before I started. So it feels That's feels amazing. Good. <laughs> feels That's good. Awesome. We're really happy for you, and it's also very annoying. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, look, he's here. Say hi, Jensen. This is Jensen David. He's so cute. Hopefully, he's gonna be really good for us while we film. He just <laughs> like gave us a big nice smile. So yeah. will you smile for he just everyone? Ate, so he should be good. Yeah, he he, he got the boob. He was really happy. Mm -hmm. Definitely a boob guy. No, yeah, he's a good guy. Just like daddy. <laughs> Obviously, I think it'd be cool if you talked about like your, you know, story and your plan. Cause I know you and I talked a little bit about like a doula versus not like birth center versus not. And then we have mm. some questions from you guys. Um, if you submitted one on my Instagram, we'll most likely cover it. And I think they're going to be speaking to most of this and then I'll be speaking hypothetically what I think I want to do. And then, you know, in the comments, we'd love to hear from you guys. Like what has your experience been? Because there's going to be people reading the comments that like have different opinions and like everyone's so different. Right. So everybody is so different. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. um, well, I'll start with just kind of sharing, um, a quick version of my birth story. Um, let's see, we went to, so gosh, we filmed on a Monday and we were thinking, how yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, how in the because world? Because I had him on Thursday, and I wasn't supposed oh, to have him for okay. like another week and a half. Yeah, yeah so we filmed. Yeah, brain was not that strong then. The last episode that we filmed was on a Monday, and then that Wednesday, um, our church had a service, and we went, and one of our pastors prayed over me and Jensen, and I went home, and an hour later, my water broke, which... Apparently, your water breaking naturally is, like, really uncommon. Did you guys know that? I did not know that. Well, you always see it in movies, you know? like I, Right. Let me tell you, nothing is, like, in the movies. Please tell me about the water breaking because I'm so concerned <laughs> that I'm going to be in the middle of freaking Target or Costco and it's just going to gush all over the floor. You Both my pregnancies, How much water? my water did not break. I, I just, have it broken. They say, uh, like, 40% of women, it, it happens naturally, but most oh, wow. women, the majority of women have to have it happen like they do it at the hospital yeah. for you. Um, but I just, I, we were on the couch and I stood up and it was like, I just, it was like I was peeing my pants and it just um, wouldn't stop. No, it wouldn't stop. And I like saw a blanket and I grabbed the blanket and like 
put it between my crotch. And my husband's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I was like, honey, my water is breaking. He's like, what? He's my cackle. That's yeah. hilarious. And like the best part was that like, I was just like, we called my doula. Um, and you know, I hadn't had any contractions or any, um, what do they call them? Braxton Hicks or anything like that yet. And what's a Braxton Hicks? It's like a, it's a contraction, but it's like, like you're not actually going into labor. Uh-huh. It's like you just have it's a like contract. a pre oh, labor yeah. contraction. Yeah. I think it's interesting too that you told us that your doula said that she was gonna take Thursday and Friday off because oh, she, did. she said he's yeah. coming Thursday. Yeah, I was oh, supposed I to work until that. Friday. My last day of the salon was supposed to be Friday. I worked Wednesday. That's when my water broke, and my doula didn't tell me till after the fact. She was going out of town when I during my due date, and so she was oh, like no. hoping that I was coming early, and it was. It was a full moon on Friday, which if you don't know, ladies, full moons, like that's when all the babies come. Cause I it's, I mean, I've heard that. It's yep. like, it's like our bodies are made of water and you're carrying so much water. It's like the full moon's like sucking it out of you. I guess. Huh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she was like, I think you're going to have him on Thursday or Friday. This baby's going to be here by the weekend. And I remember that. Sure enough, he was. Mama wasn't planning on that, but he was. See, he was named after me and born on a full moon like me. <laughs> He's not named after her. <laughs> she just that. Do not call my son Jen, please. <laughs> you can't say his name without saying mine. Little Janita. <laughs> Jen- <laughs> That's Jenna's nickname, one yeah. of her yes. nicknames. So one of them. One of them. But yeah. um, you got to talk, talk. I would love to hear. I would also like to hear more about like how you chose to, like, do, like, that you wanted a doula, um, who oh, yeah. yours is, like, why, what are the pros and cons, like, what was the benefit for you, like, why do you think people should, like, why are they beneficial, mm. you know, I would love yes. to hear, because I've always, I never knew about a doula until one of my friends was like, you need to, by the way, bless, bless you, <laughs> Jennifer, you need, like, me to move my head a certain way for you to put this on, right, let me know. <laughs> Um, We've got all kinds of things in this episode. So much hair, going on. Babies. I mean, it comes naturally talking and doing hair, right? You just That's, let it all spill. So. This is how it all started. Yes, we true. were doing Kristen's hair. Yep. We were like, we need to just have a mic. So why not just have a mic right? and a baby and mimosas? And, and it was like going to be two girls and a mic. And they were like, oh, that kind of sounds... Or three girls and a three mic. Three girls. And then it kind of sounds like mic. two girls and a cup. And yeah. then we're like, yeah, probably not. Um, okay, back on track. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, okay, so here's so, what I'll, I'll, I'll finish kind of sharing my birth story because my doula, obviously, is a huge part of that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, fast forward, like, five, that was like 11 o'clock at night, 5 a.m., started having contractions. Between 5 and 7.30, they got so strong. Um, I PM? actually... PM? No, a.m. Oh, okay. A.m., yeah. 5 a.m. Um, I actually, I puked everywhere. Oh, no. And again, the only reason I'm sharing that is because it's so common, and I didn't know that. Your body, During contractions? Yeah, your body's, oh, wow. like, making room for the baby to, like, move down. Oh, and I, like, oh. puked everywhere all over my living room floor. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like um, the exorcist in there, huh? It's like <laughs> projectile. <laughs> yeah, so um, by 7.30, they were close enough together. We're like, guess we're going to the hospital. Never thought we'd be fighting, like, morning traffic. Going, oh, my gosh. That'd be the worst. <sighs> Let me tell you, like, the worst part of all of it is, like, having contractions and being in the car. You're like, I just want to, like, be curled up, like, right? with a blanket, not, like, in a car with my seatbelt on, like, I've had stop ex- and go. explosive diarrhea before, and <laughs> I told Nick, I was like, bro, if you don't get home... I'm going to shit all over my truck. Like, get going. I mean, and he goes, birth diarrhea. He goes, you let know? me know. I'll just roll down all the windows. It's like, you are so sweet. But, like, I just, same thing. I just wanted to be home. Like, I was like, I'm going to shit my pants. Um, Can I just say, this anyways. is, like, one of the reasons I just adore you. <laughs> I say I almost shit my pants. Just because you said it. <laughs> I could tell you some postpartum stuff. That oh, we're going to get oh, there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. So, women in cars and stuff is exactly how... Nick has given birth to like over 60 given birth I given mean birth, like delivered, <laughs> delivered delivered over 60 babies like as a paramedic yeah actually when we got to the hospital there was someone who was on their way there and they pulled over on the side of the five or no the 15 and had the baby and then they showed up like after us we're like oh we must have passed you like you were what's having... the point of even going to the hospital at that point um I think I mean you still want to like make sure yeah. the baby is checked out and like make sure the umbilical cord gets cut the right way and oh, okay you yeah. know sometimes they... you can hemorrhage Oh right. yeah. Okay. All right. If you need stitches. Fair enough. You know. So so you're stuck in traffic. Uh yeah. So we got there like eight a.m. Um I decided I uh, wanted to have an all natural birth and that's exactly what I did. Um 
And mm -hmm. here's where my doula came into play was I had really bad back labor, um, which because my water broke naturally, there wasn't that like cushion, you know, for the amniotic fluid. Mm -hmm. And so that's what caused my back labor because it was like bone on bone. That's kind of like oh. what my doula said. Ouch. Yeah. So I had really bad back labor and all I wanted was for someone to rub my back. So my doula, I'm not kidding you, for like over two and a half hours, like put what a her like all of her might into rubbing my back for that long and she did not stop Aww. like the whole time like she's a saint of a person Can i, I love, her? love her yes <laughs> yes does she like do like non-pregnant people because like i would love some good back <laughs> massages too know, right? <laughs> yes um no kim nicholson she's amazing nice um but I, I would that is like my number one thing that i will say to every pregnant woman please 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 invest in a doula it is so worth it um the difference between like a doula and a midwife, people don't really understand. Like a lot of people don't even know what a doula is. Right. So, so the easiest way is like it's a coach. It's a birth coach. And you think, why do I need to have someone coach me to push a child out of my vag? Well, <laughs> because you do. Because <laughs> doctors push you to make certain decisions and a doula will help you know everything and they will fight on your behalf when you're about to cave yeah, in and be like, okay, just do it. They'll be like, yeah. no, that's not what we decided. Yeah, they're definitely there to like advocate for you for yeah. sure. Um, but there's a lot of books like the Bradley method where you'll read and it's like your husband is supposed to coach you. Well, has your husband ever pushed a baby out of his hoo-ha? No. So, you know, whether it's partner, boyfriend, husband, whatever, um, they've never done it before. This is like a woman who has not only done it, but has coached hundreds of women and been there throughout the whole process. And they just... They can help you like, okay, you know what? It's time to change positions. Let's get you in the shower, the bathtub. Let's, let me rub your back here. Try this ball, try this. Like, let me put on music and diffuse mm -hmm. oils and you know, whatever it Are is. Are there male doulas? That's a good question. I, I wonder. Probably not. Doulos. A doulo. A, do <laughs> <laughs> a male doulo. Um, yeah, probably not. But... So she was there with you. She, she, did you like interview doulas like how did you come to decide on her like you felt a connection or like what was we that? actually just got really lucky it's andy's um best friend's mom so it's kind of like telling me that i just wanted everyone she's, to hear yeah she's um a really good family friend like we call her mama kim because she's like a mom to us so um that's awesome and yeah she's she's just british she's amazing and i know i talked about like in the last episode um or like one of the last episodes like she was kind of telling us like how to get the baby out and things to do yeah. and you know th she also came over and was like this is how you hold a baby this is how you swaddle this is i mean this after is the carrier the was, after jensen was no born? before oh, okay. which they like, offer different services right because i've seen on I websites guess, yeah. like some are like you get two meetings before you get three you get this i come over after and yeah. do your dishes at your house and like different things like that oh, that'd be nice. um <laughs> so yeah there's different packages and from what i saw they're pretty affordable yeah. Like, for what they're doing, mm -hmm. it's very, like, intensive, I feel like, yeah. in many ways. It can vary, but, I mean, I just think my husband was able to be a support, like, a emotional support for me, whereas my doula was, like, physically, like, she was my coach. She was, like, talking me through breathing, positions, moving me around, so rubbing my back. she's a coach for both of you. Yeah, and well, Andy, yes, Andy could exactly. enjoy himself probably exactly. a little bit more well, while she, she handled. Him. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, to help her. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. That's She's cool. like, Andy, go get this or that or do this or rub here. And, you know, I mean, I just think, like, no male knows what we're going through. So to have a woman there, and, like, maybe it's your mom. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, like your mom's done it how many times? This doula has been there in, like, so many people's births and, like, seen every kind of scenario and can just, you know, be there for you physically. Like, it just... Just trust me, ladies. Just get a doula. <laughs> Would you get it? Or so, with your next child, assuming you you want to you want to have another one, right? Oh yeah. Um. Would you get a doula again? Oh, it'll always be Kim. Yeah. yeah. Our doula who we had. Yeah. Absolutely. I might need Kim's number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Is there anything else that you wanted to share from like your story before we go into the questions? Or oh Jenna? yeah, I'll just finish it real fast. So basically, I was able to have an all natural birth, which I'd be happy talk about dm me i'm you know we can talk Let's about, talk it, about it now we can talk about it here actually um, there's some questions about epidurals and stuff so oh, perfect. you can actually we'll get, get into, into it that there. Yeah, yeah but um so two and a or three and a half hours in the hospital um that was amazing i was like okay, okay what i know that was my so favorite fast. my favorite part is um 
my doctor said that in order to get rock star status, you she pushed her baby out. She only pushed for 23 minutes and you have to do it in 23 minutes or less. And I didn't know that at the time, but I only pushed for 11 minutes. And that is here. so Woo-hoo. crazy. Are you on some crazy like board at the <laughs> hospital like with stars next to your name? I should like, be. <laughs> honestly, I'd be like, here's the plaque for your office. Thank you so much. <laughs> you can stick that right over there. Yeah, second doctor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that, that's pretty amazing. That's uh, super awesome. So how long were you in the hospital after you gave birth? Oh, we just stayed overnight. Yeah, we and just stayed out. about like 24 hours and then we were home. Where did you is- give birth? Um, we were in Poway, Pomerado, Palmer Health, whatever. So how did you, mm-hmm. well, I guess the, there is a question about birthing centers versus hospitals. So mm, we can talk about yeah. that. I, I have like some feelings about that myself and I, there's something that doesn't exist that I wish that there did. And we'll, or I wish that I, there, well, I can't talk right now. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so freaking tired. You guys know what I mean. Yeah. I wish that what I was looking for existed. So I'm mm. curious if anyone listening has any input or you You'd guys do. You probably really but. like where I gave birth. Because a lot of times people choose birthing centers because they want to have a more natural birth. And that is what I wanted. Um, but what's the difference? I don't even know what the difference a, is. Between a birthing center? There's no doctors. Right? Um, yeah, there's no doctors. There's midwives. So that's the difference. A midwife will deliver your child and they are here for the child and the child's health. A doula is there for you, right? Um, midwives are going to do what's best for the baby. Doulas are going to do what's best for you, if that Mm. makes sense. Um, and doulas cannot deliver a child. I'm sure they probably have, but they can't. Midwives are, I could be wrong on this, but I thought I watched a documentary and they said that midwives are not doctor status. Like they're not at the level that a doctor is, Correct. which is why a birthing center can be more dangerous if you're over a certain age or you have, if you're just high risk in general. Um, well, there's not, there's not like medical intervention tools or whatever at, at birthing centers, which is typically where right. the midwives are. You can have midwives in a hospital, but or at home, but typically a midwife is grabbing a, a home birth or in a birth center. Right. Um, just their approach to things is very different, um, more on the holistic approach to things rather than a doctor or an OB. Which I like, personally I'd like somewhere in between mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I actually was, when I was pregnant before my miscarriage, I was looking at a birthing center that had great reviews. I sent it to mm-hmm. Nicholas at work and I was like, this place we should tour, we should check mm-hmm. it out. And he's like, you know, like, we're not going there. Like you, he honestly was like, I first, his reaction was no, we're not going there. I've run multiple calls at that. So they've called 911 yes. many times. And so, and then he was like, you know what, if you want to go check it out, we'll go check it out. But I'm just letting you know that mm-hmm. I've, we've bro- taken the ambulance there multiple times to pick people up. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's not their fault. Um, cause my husband was also in EMS. And so we had very similar conversations about home births home births and um, birthing centers because if you need like an emergency C-section, if the baby's heart rate stops drop starts dropping or it's take you a minute something, to get to the... yeah, then you, they cannot do anything there at a birthing center. So then they have to call 911 um, and get an ambulance. Or if it's not as like urgent, then you would just drive to the nearest hospital. Um, a lot of birthing centers are close by hospitals for that reason. Yeah. Um, like, there's one across from the hospital that I delivered at. I wish... So, well, that's good. He did tell me that. Um, I just... Went, like, I'd like to give birth in a pool of water, like, squatting. Mm-hmm. But I'd like to be in a nice hospital room with doctors there doing mm-hmm. that with me. But you can't have both, it uh, seems like. Not... I need... I like a mix. I like a mix of Western yeah. and holistic mm-hmm. medicine. Not that so. I'm aware of. I'm, I'm really similar to you. I chose this hospital because they had bathtubs. But oh, they won't let great. you give birth in there. They get They're afraid you out of being that. sued. That's what I watched yeah. in the documentary. That's mm-hmm. why they have you on a table horizontally and all this stuff is because they're afraid of the baby dropping on its head or these different mm-hmm. things. So they're afraid of getting sued. And that's why a lot of C-sections happen, I've heard, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know about the whole, like, I mean, I'm sure yeah, everyone's too happy, you know, so I'm sure that's part of it. But Liability I mean, is what they're trying to... They... <sighs> Hospitals are there to make money. (laughs) That's what the documentary is about. Exactly. They're there to make money and their worst case scenario, their worst case scenario is you coming in and not needing any kind of 
intervention or vaccine or I mean they literally get paid more to do c-sections and if you get an epidural they get paid more or if, if it's you, late and they want to go home I right. heard the documentary mm-hmm. or if they think it could be potentially dangerous for you they'll push it on you anyway just uh-huh. <laughs> Just so they don't have as much liability. Right. You know. So. So it really just depends. You know, I encourage people to do their research on. Yeah, definitely. You know, hospitals versus birthing centers. Um, I and, and here's the good news is you can have an all natural birth in a hospital. That's exactly what I did. And it's possible. Um, you know, you just, you have to know that you have to advocate for yourself or your husband or whoever, you know, your partner there has or to advocate. Doula. Or your doula. Yeah. You know, so. Um, think, we've got some <laughs> questions. You guys ready for those? Yeah. Alrighty. Um, is going into labor the second time like the first? I think, um, only Jenna can Question speak to that. Question for Jenna. <laughs> I was going to say, Jenna has very different birth experiences than I do. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, she this should... was like 20 years ago, so things are very different and we have a lot more information available to us now than we did back then. Uh, but mine were actually very similar because of the way that I had them. So both of them were induced. My son's heart rate was dropping. He was a week late. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to the hospital, induced me. And, um, like just, it was really quick. I think I was like in and out, like not in and out, but you know, in and birthed in about four hours. So similar time to yours. Um, and then with my daughter, um, again, wasn't a lot of information, so I was just like, oh, okay, that was easy, let's do that again. So when's her due date? And they said May 5th. I'm like, okay, let's induce on May 4th. Mm. So that was it. I went in at Star like Star Wars Day. 5 a- yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> 5 a.m. and, you know, got hooked up and started it, and she was born within like six hours. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they were both pretty similar, but that is not, I don't think that's normal. Hmm. So, there's, okay. there's no normal. There's no normal. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, currently trying to decide between epidural or not. Thoughts and experience. I know you have a lot to say about this one, so yes. take it away. Ooh. So, um, first, let me let me say this. I never want to put, like, my view or my opinion on other people. And if you've had an epidural and you decided to go that route, like, no judgment. Like, do whatever you need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I just really, um, the more that I researched about epidurals and what's in them, like there's fentanyl in them and most of the time the babies Did come out. That. Yeah. And they're, they're high. They're, um, you know, usually like kind of a little unresponsive and lethargic. And I just didn't want that experience. Um, Do and you I have just, a martini instead. <laughs> like maybe three of them. I had someone tell me like to just have a glass. My doula was like, Oh great. Your water just broke have a glass of wine or two and go to bed and relax. And I mean, Hell yeah. well, and I don't think we're like <laughs> telling anybody this is what you should do. We're just no, giving, right. infor- yes. we're giving information. Yeah. Our yes. experiences, our opinions, like, yes. like Brooklyn said, like yeah. nothing that we're talking about is us trying to push any one thing Agenda. on people. It's just yeah. us talking about what we, and this is goes for every single episode. This yeah. is mm-hmm. everything that we individually believe and think. Yeah. And what Brooklyn says doesn't mean that's what I think. And what Jenna says doesn't mean that's what Brooklyn mm-hmm. thinks. Like we're all you know, free thinkers of our own accord and just, yeah, we're not pushing anything on anyone. But with that, I had two epidurals. So, but the information that she just shared with me in the past few months, I didn't know. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, uh, maybe I would have rethought my decision. So yeah, yeah, it's just information. It's, um, my doula told me that they're actually, epidurals aren't even, um, legal in the UK. Really? Because of the drugs and stuff like that that are wow. in them, they um, widely use uh, laughing gas, mm-hmm. which is just now, I think, like, FDA approved out here, so you can now get laughing gas, which, oh, wow. if I needed something, that was going to be my plan, because it's just different, yeah. the way that it um, enters and exits your body and doesn't affect the baby and things like mm-hmm. that, but, um, yeah, right <laughs> let's there. see, oh, looking good. P.S. Stylist community, do not come after me for not wearing gloves, I know. <laughs> She knows. Well, I feel like I'm also sitting here like a breastfeeding mom drinking a mimosa. Like, people might come after me too. So. I, li- I made that and there's like Canceled. hardly hardly anything in there. <laughs> oh, Same yeah. Same with mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, okay, so epidurals. Um, <sighs> oh, are you going to talk, Jensen? It itches a little bit. I haven't had bleach on my scalp since I was like 
like in my early 20s. Taking it back to 2020. Woohoo. If, yeah, my son likes to talk, so he might. You guys might hear him. Baby noises are so cute. Just like his mama. <laughs> are you smiling at me? Don't look at him and talk to him. Otherwise, he's gonna start talking to all of us, and he I will can't not help it. Stop. Look at that. Yeah, what, what can't am I gonna do? Talk back to I'm like, don't look at him. <laughs> don't look at me. The eye contact. Don't he's look so at me. cute. Anyways, um, so here's what I will say. First off, so much of Hollywood teaches us to fear birth and labor, right? Well, there's so much fear around it. Everyone fears it. And mm -hmm. when your body is fearful, it produces, I think it's, is it cortisol? I think mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. 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 It's a stress and, hormone. It, yeah. Stress hormone. So everything tightens and tenses that? up, mm -hmm. right? Well, if you work with your body and you are not stressed and you're in like, um, you know, like a relaxed state, it actually causes it causes um, the muscles to relax and so then you have less pain so when you're fearful and you're stressed up it actually like makes it hurt worse so then it hurts worse than it naturally should and then they're like we'll just get an epidural right Jensen thank you doesn't it put the baby and I I was that same documentary I was talking about there's some sort of chemical that they give you that you, your body naturally produces, but it's extra, so the baby gets more stressed out too. Um, what is that that I'm thinking of? Well, if you guys want to watch this documentary, I watched. It's very like biased and one-sided. Um, Nick and I watch it, and he was like, "Okay, yes, they have some points, but they're also not sharing X, Y, and Z part of it." Mm -hmm. um, but it's called the business of uh, being born. Oh, okay. It's on yeah. Amazon. I paid like three bucks or something. Anyways, yeah. sorry. No, that's great. Yeah. So basically, like, so then it just it leads down this like whole intervention, um, like uh, spiral. You know, you get the epidural and it slows things down. Then you need pitocin, and then. You know, now the, the heart, I think that's yeah, now the heart rate's dropping and then it just ends up in C-section, you know? So they say like, usually when you get one kind of intervention, it's probably going to lead to more. And I just didn't want to go that route. So I was like, I'm just going to take it off the table. So I'm very pro, um, your body, like, let's go back to like caveman days, whatever you want to call it. Like Adam and Eve, like Eve didn't have an epidural. Like our bodies are made to do this and if we just work with it and stop being so fearful of it, I feel like more women would just realize that they like have the power to have this child. Like I just realized everybody I, wants things quick, easy these days. True. You know, I just, I really wanted to experience that. I feel like God made our bodies a certain way. And if I did, if I didn't read any books, if I didn't go to a hospital, I could go out in a bush and my body would literally know what to do. And this baby would come out. So that's like kind of, it's, I will say this, ladies, it's so much more mental than anything, you know? It, well, yeah. As, as a society, I think we're just so much more stressed out, too. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, we're kind of doomed <laughs> going into it, so. Well, just do your research. Exactly. If that's what you're wanting. If mm -hmm. you're wanting a natural birth, then do your research. Bradley Method is a great book. Um, Supernatural Childbirth is another great book. Um, so, if that's what you're wanting, there's resources out there. And if you're not... Then hey, no judgment. Go get an epidural and push that baby out. Like but you're you're super high stress energy too. So you did some things beforehand to de-stress too, right? Yes. <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? Like you said, you went and got a massage, and you did things that like made you happy. Like you got like waxed and things. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I remember that things conversation. Things that make me uh -huh. happy. Yeah. And your husband happy. Yes. So. I was supposed to do those things. Oh, he came earlier than that. That's right. Oh, wait, so you went without being waxed? No, I got waxed. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was like your was, number one priority. It was, it was. Yeah, it's true. I just, that's like, I don't want to say it's my happy place. I prefer to just be clean and... Did you poop on the table? No, I didn't poop. That is, yeah. Someone was like, every girl poops. Nope, I asked my doctor. I did not poop. Wow. So I'm proud of that. I'd be embarrassed to ask. I didn't I'd either. <clears throat> really? I didn't, I yeah. Didn't, you know. Huh. But it, maybe it's because it was so quick. Because yeah, we you both guys had pretty quick maybe. Our yeah. labor, so. If you're sitting there pushing for hours, I oh, feel like you're yeah. definitely working a turd down there. Like, what? The pressure down there, you will have no idea if you do. And yeah. I, like, thought, yeah. oh, for sure I did. Just the pressure you mm -hmm. feel, I thought I would have, but apparently not. Crazy. I emptied my system before. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so a couple other things. 
what they don't tell you in hospitals. Um, I guess that's part of the reason, as I understand it from a friend of mine who had a doula too, one of the reasons why you have a doula is because they mm -hmm. explain everything to you and they know what's going on. Um, but do you guys have anything to add? What do they not tell you in hospitals? Like... What they don't tell you in hospitals. Like maybe something like that happened that you didn't expect that you wish somebody would have said to you. Um, about um, maybe I, after, like maybe I, your milk doesn't come in for, it doesn't come in for like three days, right? You, they feed on colostrum. Like this is just yeah, an example. Yeah. I mean, I think there's so much that you just need to do your research and know, like, um, and tour your hospital and know, mm. I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't because oh. of COVID. Oh, that's oh. right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't See, even, we did do a tour of the hospital because of my whole insurance thing too, which is a crazy story. Yeah. I didn't know who was going to deliver my baby. That's true. Yeah. Or where it was going to be that's one so hospital crazy. if it was one month and one on the other so but um I think I think as far as what that question goes is um know your options know that they're there for you like are you working a poo poo out? Jensen <laughs> he likes to talk <laughs> um you just you have to advocate for yourself and you have to know your options and that you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do um, like a lot of people have questions about vaccines and stuff like that. Um, right after they take the baby out, they put like eye drops in there. Right. Like, and it's one that's technically when you learn it's for S and STD that I knew I didn't have. And I'm like, well, my child doesn't need that. So I have the right to tell them not to do that or not to bathe my child because the, I forget what it's called. There's some stuff on their skin that's like right. really good for them afterwards. And you know, so hmm. when you... When they took the baby, when they took Jensen out to, like, go check him and stuff like that, was somebody able to go with him because of COVID? They, um, that's a new thing. They do not take the babies out of the room. They never oh, leave okay. the room. Oh, it's so they bothering never me take, they did. I because like, yeah. I thought, like, oh, like, Andy, you're going to have to, like, follow the child. Yeah. They do that's not. That's what we had to do. They don't, they don't do that anymore. It's, it's like, like somebody's with that thing. kid the whole time. So, no, yeah, that's, that's good. Thing. I love that yeah. they do that. They don't old, take them away from you at all anymore. Thanks, Brooklyn. That's an old school thing. Yeah. Sorry. Not to date you or anything. <laughs> anyway, but, you know. moving along. <laughs> okay, so there's a few more questions here that I've got. I got about uh, just a few here. Um, did you have anything else you guys wanted to say on that? No. What was the last question about hospitals? Yeah, yeah what like, they don't tell anything you. Anything that they don't tell you. Anything they don't tell you. Um, you don't have to wear the ugly gowns. Did you know that? Oh, you can bring oh. your own. Can There's something wear? that I saw. Oh my gosh, I was going to send it to you. Maybe we should put it, like, I should find it and put it in there. But it's this, like, dressing that you can bring and you can, like, nurse in it. And it's yeah, backless the for the epidural. Oh. So it scoops in the back. So if you do get an epidural, it's already open. It's super cute. Like, That's I'll have cool. to find it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to wear those. Um, have a birth plan ready, but don't feel like you need one. We did not have ours. <laughs> we had it in my phone and it wasn't typed out and all of that and so um we didn't even use a birth preference birth plan you know to like hand it to the doctors um what does that just, look like anyway like um go in have baby it yeah like what else like what are your preferences do you want an epidural do you want vaccines for the child do you want to be induced do you, you know you have things do you want the room darkened mm. do you want to be in a bathtub do you you know like what are your preferences gotcha um and i'd say Here's the thing, ladies. Have have what you want in mind, but don't be like so sold on like one idea to where if that yeah, if that doesn't happen, like then you're gonna be heartbroken. Right. Don't beat yourself up. Right. That was my biggest thing. I knew what I wanted. I wanted it to be natural, but at the same time, like I've had friends who it didn't go their way and they literally were like devastated. Like that they had to have an epidural or they had to have a C section and at the end of the day, if mom and baby are happy and healthy, like that is all that matters. Mm -hmm. That's good advice for weddings too, I feel like. I was just going to say, it's like Ooh, a yeah. wedding. You I get to that point and you walk yes. down the aisle and you just have to let it go you and have what happens this happens. idea of exactly what you yeah. want mm -hmm. and when it doesn't happen that way, you get stressed out and you let it just yeah. ruin. As long as you guys are married at right? the end of the day. Exactly. Well, and like I mentioned in our first episode that the owner of my wedding venue was found dead mm -hmm. the morning of our wedding. So like... <sighs> Listen here, brides. If no one's dead, you're fine. Like, don't stress about the cake or the flowers or... <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And anyways. Um, uh, okay, so I just wanted to say real quick, someone said, a friend had just had a miscarriage. How can I support her? Um, we did actually just do an episode on this. So the last episode yeah. is all about 
miscarriage and what you can say and how you can support and everyone's different. She wanted to be supported a totally different way than I did. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just have to know the person. But if you want to check that out, I'll link it below in the description box if you're um, watching on YouTube. And um, if you're listening elsewhere, it is just the episode prior to this one. Um, so opinions on birth uh, types of birth control. Um, I have not been on birth control for about a year and a half, but I was on the NuvaRing and it was that little like jelly bracelet thing. Oh yeah. And, I had that at one point. Yeah. And so I would, they said, Oh, like no one can feel it during, you know, sex or anything. And I swear it was literally like a ring toss after every time they would stand up and I'd be like, I'm going to take <laughs> Thank you. Fold it up, shove it back up there. Um, yeah, it was not comfortable, and like oh it would get God. stuck in my tampon. I, it was just yeah. I guess I no. I pulled it. I'm like, did, was I drunk at one point and had a tampon and that yeah, at wait, the same it time? Yeah, wait, it got stuck I was gonna say because you don't have those up at the same time. You I was I was probably drunk and had both up there at the same time. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Doubly protecting. But as far as like other, I, I, I switched from that one. It also made my skin really scaly at one point. Mm. Like it was just huh. always dry and I finally took that out and it went back to normal. So I don't know for sure if it was that. I just like the low hormone stuff, but what, what are, what are yeah. your thoughts? What have you liked? I, um, well, I had a not so fun experience with an IUD. Um, Ugh. I was not Uh-oh. prepared to have one, um, you know, inserted and they gave me the option and I'm like yeah sure sounds great just like wasn't prepared if I'm being really transparent it was like super early in the morning and I hadn't eaten breakfast and I was hungover oh (laughs) so that probably did not help the case but um that would be the worst uh yeah I passed out on the table (laughs) oh I've heard it's pretty painful I, it's it's a contraction it's a forced contraction yeah I was told I couldn't even have an IUD because my cervix is too small Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My OB was up there and she's like, yeah, I wouldn't even recommend that for you. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. I've never taken birth control, so I can't. Oh, Oh, okay. I have two kids, so. (laughs) And now, like, now, like, breastfeeding, like, I, do I want a kid again right now? No. And ladies, listen up. They say that, like, oh, you can't get pregnant breastfeeding. Yes, you can. You You can't get pregnant while you're breastfeeding? Is that what you just That's what people say. They tell you that, and that's what I thought. I know so many people. They're like, like two, three months. Like, he's three months tomorrow, and, like, I, like... They get pregnant yeah. and they're breastfeeding. <laughs> oh, I know so, people that have gotten pregnant on birth control. Yeah, and IVs and well, all of that yeah, too, so. I know. Oh, so man. just be careful, but yeah, like so now it's like I don't really want to get pregnant right away again. But I I haven't been on like hormonal birth control in years because I just don't like the hormones mm-hmm. in my body. And um, they have like progesterone only ones for like when you're breastfeeding because you can't have the estrogen. Um, it lowers your milk supply. So either that or go back to the old school. Go I was about back to say, just condoms. don't have sex. Well, you can oh, just not have sex when you're ovulating too, right? I mean, are well, you back to your period? Yes, or? no, no. I haven't had my cycle yet. But the thing is, is I could ovulate before I have my cycle. And right. so I could get pregnant before I even. Got it. Yeah, before okay. I'm even aware. So I think we're just going to go old school maybe. Right, yeah. <laughs> condoms. Condoms it is. I thought you were going to say pull out. <laughs> That is not but the, a we good enough discussed method. discussed that in the last, last episode. Yeah. But, yeah. but that wasn't. Pre-sperm. Even was Jen's pre-sperm? hands are sweating. Yeah, yeah you should be careful, like, even not having sex, you know, messing around. All that foreplay. I know. Oh, so, okay, side note. <laughs> Andy listened to our podcast. Oh, no. Apparently, I had never told him your story, Jenna. Oh. And Andy's like... What were they doing? Like how? And I had to like straight up so tell many Andy. Someone asked that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm I saw like, that. Um, well, <laughs> we're gonna go into that in the next episode. <laughs> yeah. I just um, came out and said it. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm getting used to being that blunt. <laughs> well, you getting know. used to it. I know. Yeah. Some of my church friends were like, "Should we listen to your podcast?" I'm like, "Oh, um, probably not." <laughs> I, I told my daughter, "I'm like, can you just tell your friends not to listen to the oh, podcast?" <laughs> I found this mug that I need. It says, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little too. Uh-huh. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I go to church. I love, I love Jesus, but I'm going to talk about sex because I'm married. Uh-huh. So. It's not like it's a bad thing to talk about. Oh, gosh, you know? no. Who cares? If our somebody talks to me about sex, then we would know more. Go to a marriage conference with our church. Like, they're talking about sex up on stage. The pastors. I mean, yeah. Hey, it's a natural thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And that's how you were made. And he's I almost, agree. It's almost his... One year from being conceived. 
<laughs> the story that I told on oh, that's the right. second episode was our anniversary, and our anniversary oh. is this week, or next week, next Wednesday. So Aww. It's your one year of being conceived, bud. It's so awesome. <laughs> the story that everyone knows he's now. Not, he's <laughs> not amused. Someday when he's older, he's going to be like, oh my gosh, that's mom. So embarrassing, mom. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a good one. Aftercare. What happens after you give birth? Uh, Ooh. What's it like down there? How's pooping? How's mm. I can still feel it. When did you start having sex again? <laughs> <laughs> you still feel it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, you want me to answer this one? Yeah, well, uh, well okay. I think it's good to know that you were not, a, ha, did not have an episiotomy. No. And I did. Mm -hmm. So healing is different, mm -hmm. I'm uh, thinking, so go for it. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, with my pushing in 11 minutes, I probably was pushing when I shouldn't have been, and so, um, you can tear in three places, apparently. There are... Yeah, she said that earlier, I was like, okay, one and two, and where's the other one? <laughs> on the side. side. It's like 360 degrees, so you yeah. probably tear any one of those, And huh? here's the thing, though, don't be scared of that, ladies. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you, you don't know. Like, there's just pressure down there. Like, I had no idea until, like, afterwards, the doctor's down there, I'm like, oh, did I tear? And she's like, yeah. You know, they were second degree tears. I mean, um, you heal, you're fine. Um, I've been sending all my girls who are having babies the tux pads. Those are like <laughs> a lifesaver. And there's this spray that's like a anti itch and like pain reliever and that um, just sounds amazing for life in general. I could use some <laughs> vagina spray, just like lay on the couch like pss, pss, fan. <laughs> Eating her garlic and um, I'll get you some, Preston. I'll get you some. Thank you. That'd be so great. I'll, be put, the I'll next put it in the podcast. fridge. Yeah. I'll cool it and just oh my gosh. spritz. I think spritz the one thing edge. I was surprised about is that um, once the sutures heal, it's so itchy. Mm. Oh, like, I could imagine. I Under the boobs no for the boob job was like... Oh, really? So itchy. I, I guess I've never really had stitches or anything before. Because yeah. so. it's healing. Yeah. So, so what is a second degree tear real quick, There's, though, there's four forget. degrees. Um, four, like okay. Four would be the worst, like, from your hoo-ha all the way to your bum-bum hole. And that's the fourth degree. Um, I'd be like, so I'm not I'm shitting for three. Two degrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they give you a lot of stool softeners. <laughs> um, yeah. And you have to stay really hydrated, otherwise you get constipated. Um, that wasn't... Yeah, real fun. Um, and, oh my gosh, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to share this story. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. I'm going to be brave like Kristen. Um, you got this. I have an allergy to MSG. If I eat something, I'm like running to the bathroom. Well, we were in Jensen's room and we just had like some chicken. Didn't realize there was MSG in it. And I literally was like, almost like tossed the baby at Andy. I was like, hold <laughs> the child. <laughs> And like ran to the bathroom, and because I had like stitches, I couldn't really oh. punch to hold things. Yeah, I was washing uh. those pajama pants later that night. Oh, <laughs> oh no! So that way. One of my friends just texted me. She's on a, a vacation. She's Ouch. like, I. I was like, How's your vacation going? She's like, I just shit my pants. She's like, Literally just shit my pants. I can't believe I'm single. <laughs> I was like, I have oh, shit my pants like at least twice, so. Yeah, I've had some incidences where I don't oh. like to talk about them. You shit your pants all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Now all the mama, time. mama just needs adult diapers. That's yeah. the other thing. You don't have to wear diapers after birth. Everyone says that. You don't just know. Wear pads just wear big pads and like some granny panties. I was just about to say granny panties. Those like are... get some really soft like comfy ones. Like I just got like booty shorts that were really soft and silky and you know do what oh, you that's do. bougie. Gilly Hicks. I, I just pull on wore the like pull up like <laughs> grandma you know depend diaper. Okay, well let me say when you leave the hospital they give you like these net like disposable undies. I definitely was wearing those for a little bit and then yeah, went to the comfier okay. ones. Yes, you know? yes, yes. But it wasn't like okay. a diaper. It yeah. was like disposable. <laughs> she was like crinkling as she was walking out of the hospital probably. <laughs> so they wheeled me out, but yes. Okay. I was well. crinkly walking up the stairs. <laughs> oh my god. Speaking of pooping our pants, someone over here, not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Pooped his pants and needed a diaper change. So we're Aww. back. <laughs> yeah. So sweet. Well I'll just say real quick my uh oh my gosh what epidural story. I had an epidural with both of my kids. But my son, they had to do it, like, I think six or seven times. How old are they, your kids? Oh, yeah. Uh, my daughter's 16 and my son is 20. So a lot of the information that I have may be completely outdated. Thank you, Brooklyn. Um, <laughs> but it's still, 
your story. Yeah, it's still my story, and people should know. Yeah, and I had the epidural. It's it's fine. It was fine. I did find that I was able to really take in and enjoy the labor part of it because I wasn't focused on the pain. And you know, we were talking. I was talking with my the baby daddy mm -hmm. and uh, whatever. And so, but I feel like I have like lower back pain and things that were probably from. Mm -hmm. having to have the epidural so many times and um and by the the first pregnancy when I had the epidural they came in and checked me like two seconds later and we're like oh we shouldn't have given you that uh you're ready to push so Aww. looking back now and hearing Brooklyn tell me all the information that she's found I probably would opt to try at least to not have an epidural so yeah. Yeah, but you're but not going to get pregnant again. You just want me to do it for you. Exactly. So <laughs> we're just making a birthing plan for Brooklyn. Perfect. And me and so I can Ken. Be a surrogate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <awesome>. Andy. <laughs> I love it. Um, last question. Morning sickness tips and postpartum tips. 13 weeks and both scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Barfing face. <laughs> Yeah. What would you well, say about morning sickness? Because I never had it. Yeah, I, didn't I had either. it definitely. Morning, noon, and night, beginning. Yeah, yours to is rough end. with both, right? With both, yes. Oof. So it did happen twice. Oof. Um, but I will say my daughter's was not as bad. Um, it, like I said in the like a couple episodes ago, I don't know which one, but I think that your, I believe that my mental health and all of that was a big part of it. So I think if maybe I had exercised and pushed myself to eat healthier mm -hmm. and get out of the mental state that I was in and, you know, go for walks and things like that, it could have possibly made a difference. I don't know for sure, but um, I do think that that's important to at least try. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't work, then just hang on. It's only nine months, but it sucks. <laughs> yeah, only nine months. Like, that seems like <laughs> Actually, so... it's ten. <laughs> it's technically uh, ten. Yeah. It's technically ten. But, um, yeah, I gained like 80-something pounds with each kid because really? I was so sick. I just was like... Oh, I feel nauseous. I should eat. Oh, I feel nauseous. I should eat. And the only thing that I like wanted was junk food. Yeah. So, yeah, just try and break the habit. <laughs> try it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, postpartum tips. Yeah, like I said, the tux pads are gonna be amazing. Well, and this is if you don't have a C-section. I didn't have a C-section, mm -hmm. so that I can't really mm -hmm. speak to. But postpartum. Um, you think that you're like doing better and you're ready to like walk around and stuff, but you don't realize the healing that happens from the inside. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I mean, when they show you your, oh, I hate the word, your placenta. <laughs> are you eating yours? Ew, no. Oh. No, I know I people are gonna, <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I didn't do anything with you it. You don't have to. Yeah. My okay. friend was obsessed oh. with it. Here. I feel like it's, I don't know, I just researched this part of like the weight <laughs> loss and all that and it's just natural. I go in my hair. <laughs> Oh, oh, buddy. But anyway, okay. sorry, I totally interrupted you. And oh, no. Um, no, but, like, the size of your placenta is huge. Um, it's huge. And that's, really? like, you know, there's, like, a hole inside of you that's healing. Yeah. And so... How hard um, is that to push out, by the way? Uh, that was a question I had. Oh, you no. No, it. it's not hard. Yeah. Really? You, you, don't. you don't really feel it. So it's not like, okay, wow, I just did this. Okay, now push this out. And no. This is another... She told me, she's like, oh, I see it. Just, like, give a little push. And it was out. And okay. I said, okay, I do want to see it, even though it was really gross. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Did you with take it. a picture? Andy, you took a picture. I okay, I was gonna say. Too. Yeah. <laughs> he did. I know. Okay, wait. I watched this reality TV show uh, called It's something Sisters. It's about how uh -huh. sisters are really close. If you guys have seen this, you know exactly Sister what I'm wives. talking about. No, it's not. But <laughs> <laughs> sisters that are just really close, like most of them are twins. It's like I don't know, extreme sisters or something like that. This girl has her placentas in jars on shelves in her house. Wait, like oh by her dining room table. Gosh. I was like, what? What to each their own. Um, just to look at? Just to preserve and have them. Oh, like oh. if they need blood cells? No, just to, like, just to look at them. Or? Just to like, as a decoration oh. and a, oh. as a, 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 I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sentiment? Like. Okay, I'm judging. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little weird. <laughs> It's a little weird, but yeah. I also have like a dead rat like this with the tail up like this in this glass case okay, in now my house. I'm yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got their own kind of weird. I have a longhorn skull. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have okay. a cowhide. Oh. I have a I have fake cowhide. <laughs> no dead carcasses in my house. <laughs> right. Okay. Anyways. Um, gosh, we go off on tangents. So Squirrel. morning sickness tips. You had like essentially no. Did you have any symptoms at all? <laughs> Um, Hi. any symptoms? Mm -hmm. What? Oh, yeah. 
Ooh. symptoms of pregnancy. <laughs> the, the, probably the worst thing I got was um, the constipation. Oh, that's it's right. It's real in the beginning. Um, it was really funny because I was like, it was like back in January, and I was like, oh, honey, look, like I'm starting to show. And I I went almost two full weeks without using the restroom. He's smiling at me. I can't even handle it. Are you smiling at me? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look how silly I look. <laughs> look at these city feetsies. Oh, I wish we had this on film. This I love that he's literally like looking at me. Can you show? Oh, well, well, now he can't see me. Like, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I think he's going to like blondes. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi. Do you want to talk for everyone? Big boobs Hi. and blondes. That's that's you. It's yeah. basically Nick in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a type. Um... Yeah, so th that was the worst that I probably had. It was the yeah. constipation and went almost two full weeks. And yeah, I showed my two stomach. Two full day. weeks? Almost, yeah, oh, I went no. 13 Ouch. days. And was like, mm. Andy, like, look, my bump's finally showing. And I had him take a picture. And then you and had then me you take a picture. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> yeah, so you were at work and you're like, yeah, I think I popped. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. And then so now the like, joke no. is it was my poop baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, um, that's all. I mean, when I was pregnant, I had no morning sickness at all. Breaking out, I had a little bit of constipation. Um, you know what I also noticed too? When I would have an orgasm, I could feel it in my uterus. Like, I could just feel a little bit of it. It's kind of bizarre. I don't know if I would know if I was feeling something in my uterus. Yeah, it's like in your lower stomach. Like, huh. below. And I told that to my mom. Did and she you? was like, oh, yeah, okay. Did you know that you can have an orgasm when you are giving birth oh shoot yep read what it. read it in the bradley method book it's i mean it's, it's not very common but <laughs> he's just smiling again he's like <laughs> yeah um something about the way that your organs like move and um when you have an orgasm like everything like comes up and when you're like pushing the baby out all your organs like come up and so it can actually cause that same sensation um yeah I, unfortunately, did not get to experience that. Yeah, well, I guess if you have an epidural, you wouldn't experience that no, either. Uh -uh. You wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, Isn't yeah. that funny, though? It's actually a thing. In the Bradley Method book, they talk about it. Interesting. <laughs> I'd have to See, read that. See, learn something new every day. You, yeah. Just, I would say the biggest thing is, like, learn about your body, and that's what I love. The Bradley Method book really teaches you about your body, and... I, I never got, like, a very proper sex ed. And this book, I, like, came home and was, like, telling Andy all these things, like, that I learned about my body. And he's like, you didn't know all this? I'm like, no. You know, That's so. That's crazy. Anyways, learn I, about your body. I want to read that book. I did Google it. Um, and uh, so apparently when you have an orgasm, you're, um. Oh, bless, bless you. you. <laughs> um, your, is it your cervix? Something contracts up there a little bit. When well, you what? When you have an orgasm. Mm. So. I mean, you're asking the girl who got pregnant by a finger, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the finger had other things on yes. it. If you want to hear about that, what what episode did we talk about that in? Um, the two. last one? Two. The second one. Two? The yeah, second yeah. episode. Two. Okay. Yeah. The mm -hmm. pregnant virgin. Um, okay, so I feel like that's everything for this episode. Thanks yeah. for sharing, guys. Super helpful, and if you guys have anything to add, or if not, we will be reading the comments on YouTube mm -hmm. and answering there if you guys have any questions after the fact. Yeah, definitely let us know if you guys like have more questions. Um, and always feel free to like DM us if you have like personal questions and we always say we don't know it all, but you know, we're happy to help and share what we do now. So yeah. <laughs> I can't handle this eye contact over here so cute and then he's just smiling like Are you such a you flirt. Here, let's, let's put you up to the camera so everyone can see how yes. freaking cute you are. So you cute. carry him around for nine months for him to just look Aww, like daddy. Look at <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, this light is so bright. I know. He's very vain. He loves looking at himself. Yeah. Oh, are you good? No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> I can't. All right, we need to go rinse you. Okay, what are we talking about next episode real quick? We're talking about... Um, Successful women in yes. relationships, yes. dating. Being um, a successful woman, it's tough. You Friendships. Relationships. In general. Yes. Um, and how it affects those and um, kind of all of that stuff, kind of being the breadwinner or maybe just making more or just maybe you make more than you used to. So that's what we're going to be covering in the next episode. We're going to get into the habit of trying to give you guys a little sneak peek oh. of what we're talking about as we get organized. <laughs> um, but thanks for listening, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. And again, all of the links, um, if you're watching on YouTube for all of the Spotify, etc., will be in the description box below. And you can also follow us on Instagram. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.